तो फाइनल है कभी आई लव यू नहीं बोलना राइट राइट कुल वैसे नेवर से आई लव यू को फ्रेंच में कैसे बोलते हैं नदी जमे जतेम नदी जमे जतेम आह सो सेक्सी है हरम You'll have to excuse me. I'm a bit tongue-tied looking at you all, a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm more overwhelmed than you are. I want to come and give each and every one of you a hug <laughs> and a kiss if you let me. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. We will do that. We will do that. Just uh, first the formal stuff. <laughs> okay, I'd like to uh, to begin by taking you back to your childhood, if I may. And can you remember what your first uh, influence of the movies were? When did you first experience movies for the first time? Wow, she's absolutely right, actually, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Of course, he's the first and biggest influence. I, the first and biggest influence on Hindi cinema. I. <laughs> So yeah, as far back as I can remember, sir, the only thing I ever wanted to do was be a Hindi film hero, and that was because of yes, the first the first guy was Mr. Amita Bachchan, uh, and do uh, you remember the do you remember some of his iconic dialogues? <laughs> How would? Uh, How would Amitabh Singh Ode Dil Pe Fikre? That's a good one. Huh? Ode I Dil Pe Fikre, Anga Rao Mai Nikre, Ode I Dil Pe Fikre, Ay. Really, he is an icon of Hindi cinema. Yes, of course. Oof, tumare soul, tumare adarsh. Kis kam ke tumare soul? Tumare saare usoolo ko kund kar ek vakt ki roti nahi banai ja sakti, Ravi. जे नादर्शों के लिए तुम अपनी जिंदगी पर खेलने के लिए तैयार हो क्या किया और नादर्शों ने एक चार पांच सौ रुपए की पुलिस की नौकरी एक किराए का क्वार्टर आई यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग एनीथिंग सर यस ऑफ कोर्स एवरी वर्ड एवरी वर्ड बेसिकली व्हाट अमिताभ बच्चन इज टेलिंग शम्मी कपूर इज वी बोथ स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द बार एम नाउ एम हेयर बट यू एंट वॉट गुड डिड योर राइटस लाइफ आई एम द शिट एंड यू एंड यू आर नॉट माई गुड सर is basically the gist of what he's saying okay. till shami kapoor has one line and he comes and he hits him hard yeah. he's like what do you have we were both brothers i've got all this money and this cash and this properties and cars and all this wealth what do you have and he says i've got mother <laughs> <laughs> and that's it that's it shami wins Very shami famous. wins obviously this audience this Good looking good looking audience has just watched <laughs> This um very good looking and enchanting audience has just watched your first your very first oh, Yashraj wow. film Band Baja Band Barat, Baja Barat. Uh, That's the most special one of them all I'll tell you that Which which is obviously still a big hit Um how did you get your first break with Yashraj films <laughs> Uh wow you totally exposed me there bro <laughs> <laughs> uh none of my hard work was uh, amounted to anything <laughs> i had to compromise myself <laughs> uh, um, but no it was uh, yeah it was um um a difficult difficult period um you know i for all practical purposes have had no filmy background you know um so it was a bit far fetched for somebody in my position back in the in the early 2000s to think that i would uh, land a part in mainstream hindi films you know it was still a very closed and nepotistic industry back then run like a mom and pop shop if you please i'd look around me and see examples only of uh, producer sons director sons actor sons would get the prime opportunities in hindi cinema 
but um, so I kind of actually let go of my lifelong dream of becoming an actor, and I was pursuing creative writing for the longest time. But uh, when I was in university, it kind of hit me one day when I took an acting class by complete fluke. And it kind of hit me that this is my calling, that I would uh, regret it if I didn't at least take my chances. You know, I can accept uh, failing at it, but I can't accept not at least trying. So I called my dad and I was like, I know that I'm starting to be a creative writer and you expect me to get a job in, in, in the advertising world. But I've kind of changed my mind. I want to come back to Bombay and try my hand at being an actor. And he says, uh, I've invested a lot in this degree, son. You had better finish it. <laughs> <laughs> After that, you can do what you want. And I came back to Bombay, and it was about three and a half years. I was dabbling in various things, like I joined a theater group. Um, I was uh, an assistant director for, a, for the longest time. And then finally, I got down to it. I made my portfolio, which is like the actor's calling card. And I was going from office to office, saying, here's my pictures. And uh, I'm a new actor looking for work. If you've got anything, please call. And about six, eight months into that process, I got a call from Shanu Sharma, uh, who is <laughs> yeah, one of my dearest friends. And it's a crazy history that I have with Shanu. I met her when I was 16, uh, when I was wanting to be a creative writer. And she wasn't even a casting director back then. But she was like, you've got something. And you should, do you want to be an actor? And I said, no, I wanted to, but I've kind of given that up. And many years later, lo and behold, I'm a struggling actor. She's an up and coming casting director. She happens to meet Aditya Chopra, who happens to mention to her that he's looking for a new boy for this film band, Baja Bharat. And she says, uh, you should go and try. So she called me and I was on a date and I wasn't even answering the phone. Uh, yeah, beautiful girl who is actually one of Shanu's friends who I know because Shanu introduced me to her. And, I like uh, it how you pointed at me and you said, beautiful girl. <laughs> And uh, I was very, very immersed in the date. I was lost in this girl's eyes. Beautiful, beautiful girl. I can't not do that. Sorry, and, guys. And there's my phone sitting right there. It goes, Shanu calling, Shanu calling. And I just turned it around. I, was, I didn't want to have anything to do with it till the damn thing wouldn't stop buzzing. <laughs> so it was like the seventh missed call. And I was like, Shanu, what is it? What do you want? Uh, but before that, the reason that actually got me to finally take that call was one SMS, the most, the pro possibly most significant SMS of my life. I was like, okay, so I, I had I better find out what position. Shanu wants. So I flipped it around and I saw what she had sent. She had sent me uh, two words, Aditya Chopra. <laughs> so I read that, almost fell out of my seat. <laughs> Imagine what it's like for a struggling actor to get a, uh, a message like that from a casting director, essentially. Uh, so I called her back, and she was like, OK. So I spoke to him. He's looking for a new boy. You should go and audition for it. And I knew, I knew the opportunity was huge for me, the biggest. It would be the biggest audition of my life. Uh, so I gave it all. I did well. And the rest is history. <laughs> How about that? And he's sat here right with us now. Um, <laughs> Talking about your relationship with Aditya Chopra, um, obviously he's like a sort of a godfather to you um, in terms of how has your journey been with him and with YRF? I know that you've got a very personal equation with him now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll always be indebted to him for having the faith in me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always never forget to mention the fact that when Mr. Aditya Chopra spotted me, when he saw that audition and he tells me, uh, he told me this even back then. Uh, he's never seen on first audition like that. He was completely blown away. He was like, this is the guy. This is him. And he tells me, I saw, in that one audition, I saw a full career in, in acting for you. Uh, so it's commendable that he has that kind of, that kind of vision. He, he recognizes something when he sees it. Um, and I mean, he, he for me, Having had no background to be the first solo hero ever to be launched by Yashraj, they always worked with stars, you know. Even when I got the uh, call for the audition, I was scratching my head. I was like, is this legit? Are they really launching a new face? But it was. And there were a lot of voices around Mr. Chopra at the time who were telling him, and his films were not doing well. You know, he had a string of flops in his company. And everybody was like, Adi, you have officially lost it. You don't know what you're doing. This is, the, you're going to launch, this is your first hero from Yash Raj Films, come on. Yeah, him too. <laughs> him too, he wasn't the only one, by the way. Um, but he told everybody around him that the sooner you accept 
that this is the boy who's going to act in the film, the better it is for you, because I'm totally convinced. Uh, and I, I doff my hat to that kind of paramount conviction. You know, he was the only person who believed in me. And that's why, I mean, he has a very, very special place in my life. Um, I have a very close relationship with him, which has actually blossomed and become even more substantial uh, after Befikre because, uh, you know, the director-actor relationship is much more substantial. He's, he's always been the mentor and I've been the protege. But uh, this time it's been, it's been wonderful working with him. I've got to know him much more and uh, he's really an amazing guy. And you'll see a completely different side to him in Befikre. You'll be very, very shocked to see that the guy who made Rabbi ne bana di jodi <laughs> makes a film like Befikre, which is uh, which is quite 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 current, if I may say so myself, pretty out there. Um, so it's 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 young, it's fun, it's free, liberating, humorous, happy, endearing kind of film, um, and I'm really happy that he selected me. It's a really really big deal for me to be the only other actor other than Mr. Shah Rukh Khan who he's directed. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's huge for me, it's huge. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with the way the film is shaped up. I can't wait for people to see it. It kind of has the same feeling that Band Baja gives you, you know, that, that feeling of that kind of warmth and endearment in a film. Uh, I'm really happy that everything came together and we kind of achieved that effect. <laughs> really? <laughs> Even when I die in Bansali's films? <laughs> You feel warm and fuzzy, and <laughs> when I'm dying, <laughs> I'm like, Matani, <laughs> yeah! One more question from us now before we hand over to the floor. I, I, but I think it's an important one, and, and I think this film, there's never been a better time for this film to be coming out than now, when the world is changing so much and so fast. But the, on a serious note, just for one moment, when you were making the film, in Paris last year, there were those, those terrible atrocities at the Bataclan. How did you, because at one point I believe you were asked, you were told that you should possibly leave Paris because it wasn't safe to stay there. The director decided that no, we need to stay and finish what we've started. How do you go back on set and act out carefree with all those kinds of troubles in the same city? We were actually in the pre-production stage when the terror attacks hit Paris. Um, and a lot of people, um, were advising Adisa to kind of move the story to another city. And he thought to himself, and he says, Yaar, mera dil nahi manta. I have written this film with Paris. Uh, Paris is almost like a third character. It is the city of love. And um, I would be doing a great injustice if I were to not stick to the spirit of the film, which is to be carefree, you know? I will go in, I will shoot this film in Paris, uh, and I will be carefree about it. I will not get bogged down by these things. And he stood by his decision and the kind of support that we got from our Parisian crew and from the authorities there was very overwhelming and we had the best shooting experience ever. I'm so happy. Uh, and you will see when you see the film that uh, Paris is, there could not be a more ideal backdrop for a story like this. Speaking of uh, Paris, obviously Paris is the place of love. So I've got to ask this question, especially for all those ladies out there and probably for some of the boys as well. Um, <laughs> but I have to ask, <laughs> is there anybody in your life right now, as in... <laughs> yeah, Karan Jor and Arjun Kapoor are fighting <laughs> over me. <laughs> I tell them, boys... <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, what advices would you give to an aspiring Bollywood actor or actress? I was actually at the Global Citizen concert yesterday, uh, yes. where, <laughs> yeah, nice, good one. It was a great one. Your performance uh, yeah, was... Hey, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Coldplay was amazing, man. Uh, but I met Mr. Anupam Kher then. He invited me over to chat with the young actors that he trains in his institution. And I was, uh, I said, I really want to go to basically tell them one thing. You know, um, which when I was a part of these acting schools and institutions, uh, I was a bit disillusioned to see everybody around me was in it for the wrong reasons, for the lure of the glamour and the money and the fame uh, and everything that is really just the peripheral stuff. It's the frills that comes along with it. What I, what I would like to remind young actors is that they have to be in it because they love acting 
and nothing more or less than that. It's as simple as that. You could be a street performer, you could be a theater performer, or you could act in indie films or mainstream films. It's not about the platform, it's about the love and the joy that you get out of actually performing. And you have to be in it for the right reasons and you have to want it that bad if you really want to do it. You want to, you want to, you want it, you have to have it, you have to have that desire burning in you that you want it that bad. You should not have a plan B, according to me. If there is a plan B, then there's something wrong. Uh, so I would like to tell every young actor that it's very important to be in it for the right reasons. It's very easy to get carried away and lured by the stuff that just lies at the periphery. And it's not going to work if you're not in it for the right reasons. So if you do truly love acting, you know, if you like playing characters and you like reading and learning lines and, and learning choreography and dancing, if, if actually performing in front of people, evoking an emotional response out of an audience is the stuff that you actually love doing, then you're in it for the right reasons. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much for your answer. Thank you. Hi, um, Ranveer. Um, okay. My... I'm Ranveer's babe on Twitter. I'm a huge fan of yours. And I have a question that if you could describe each of your characters in one word, what would you say? Well, that's a good one. I know. <laughs> oh, lots of questions. <laughs> I've thought of this question for weeks. Okay, what's so the first one? Bitu. Um, sweetheart. Uh, what's the second one? Ladies versus Ricky, Ricky Bell. Bell. I wasn't in Ricky Bell. Juta. I never did that Liar. movie. That wasn't me. That was not me. They cloned me for the year 2011 and okay. used my face in a film yeah. that I didn't actually act in. Atman and <laughs> Chapati. Uh, uh, Varun uh, Sensitive. Ram. Ram. Flamboyant. <laughs> Bikram. Uh, Bikram. Hard. Dev. <laughs> uh, Dev is again a Janya. He's a sweetheart. Hero. <laughs> Bajirao. Hero, hero, hero. Kabir. Kabir, um, he's a, Kabir is a, he's just a child. Dharam. <laughs> Dharam. <laughs> Nutbag. Yes. <laughs> I love you lots, by the way. I love you too. <laughs> and I'll show you when I come over there. <laughs> Thank you. In terms of confidence, you come across as a really confident character. You're always sort of ready for it, but is there ever a moment before you're addressing an audience or about to kind of go on stage, do you ever sort of stop and think, oh my God, my are yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> do you ever think, oh my God? And I want to know, what do you say to yourself in that position? As you can see, I've got a big fat guitar next to me <laughs> and I've started learning to play. Amazing. And I often sort of wonder, you know, <laughs> what can I do? How Do you sort of have a chat with yourself? Are there any words that you say to yourself to help, you know, with your confidence? And also, the second part is, um, would you... I've actually bought a Sharpie with okay. me today. Now, my guitar is my baby. I don't even let my husband touch it. All right, right, <laughs> I'm all really right. protective. And I was wondering, would you write me a few words of confidence on the back of my guitar? It's a brand new tailor. It's, I'm very possessive of it. Oh, wow. And I've just recently started playing at weddings and addressing audiences. There's not very many kind of female Asian guitarists in the UK. And I really want to kind of start a new trend and encourage women to get out there, learn, learn to play. I will most definitely do that. Thank um, you. Oh, you're you allowing me to touch things your husband doesn't want? I wow. know. But you know, <laughs> Renvir, I was just saying, you know, my, my dad. I would love to leave you My message. dad almost every day, he says to my husband, Pata tumhe, tumhari shakal jo hai na, Renvir Singh ki tarah hai. Aisi shakal bichara. Mashallah, mashallah. Uh, yeah, I recently met um, uh, somebody I look up to a lot, uh, Thierry Henry, uh, the <laughs> Arsenal legend. Yeah, he was, uh, he was in Mumbai recently and I had the opportunity to meet him and he wrote me a message. And uh, yes, uh, words of encouragement that really go a long way. So I would love to do that for you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I shit a heartbreak every time I go out to perform. <laughs> what can I tell you? That's the truth of the matter, really. Um, especially uh, live performances. I actually vomit backstage every time I go. <laughs> and if I don't vomit, then it's, I consider it a, a bad omen. I was like, I didn't vomit this time. Uh, so I don't know what happens. It's just the, the few minutes before you actually go out on, the, on, on stage, it's, it's absolutely nerve-wracking. Also, on the first day of playing any new character, I feel like 
Oh, uh, I've forgotten. It's like every morning I go to set and before I actually walk on to the set, I feel like I've forgotten everything. Like I don't know how to act and I don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of blank out. It's like, oh, is this actually happening? Am I doing this? So yeah, it still happens, but the key is to channel all that nervous energy into the performance. Ultimately, energy is energy. You know, whether it's nervous energy, whether it's happy energy, whether it's sad energy, energy is energy. And you have to learn how to channel that. Uh, there are some things that happen to me in my life that generate a lot of angst inside me. You know, a lot of anger. And uh, you know, you just have to learn how to mold that energy and channel it into the right things, generate it, yeah, gen generate uh, positivity out of it and put it in all into your creativity. So I wish you all the very best and uh, I will write you a personal note um, for Noreen. Uh, I am going to take my time with this, uh, so let's not keep this uh, glamorous audience waiting while we do this. Um, I will definitely write this though, if we can keep this precious guitar uh, safe until we are done with all. Okay, any more questions? The fun stuff. Thank you. If one day you happen to wake up as Shah Rukh Khan, what would you feel like? What would you do? I'm sorry, what? If you wake up and you, you're a Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. What would you do? How would you feel? Wow. <laughs> I'd feel like the king of the world. <laughs> I'd feel like a million bucks. I would produce a film that I would direct myself and I would call that young chap Ranveer and say, Hey, would you like to act in my film? <laughs> I was actually with him last night. Uh, and, <laughs> and I told him, I was like, when are you going to direct? Can I please be in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so he much. Was in, he was in quite, uh, quite a jolly mood last night, I have to say. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Ashita and I'm from Mauritius, so if you could oh, say wow. a big hi to all the Mauritian fans, that would be great. Um, well, obviously we all love you for your dance move and I just wondered whether you could just perform on the Evie Evie for us. A few moves would be great. Which one? Uh, Evie Evie from... Evie Evie. Wow. I love that song, man. Show us some moves. What? you got to play it. You gotta play it. You gotta play the song. We. Where did that come from? Now you gotta play it. Okay. Come on, big cheers. We don't want them to. You didn't hear that. Can we? Can you? Even I can't hear that. Come on. Wow. Thank I'm you a, so much. I'm a really Thank bad you. singer. Would you like to hear Post me sing? All the Parisian fans would love it. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. A baloko masatta kita jalo malke. Chhati chodi dolo shole dand palke. Kudiye haraya tune chal chalke. Baato wali baas gita bol khelke. Go ahead. Wow. Basically, I'm just. Uh, I don't know if you ask, but I just want to say one thing. What would you like to be remembered in about 15, 20 years' time? Would you remember as an actor or as a superstar? See, in the Bollywood, there's two categories I put, my, I put people in there either an actor or a superstar. So, what would Give you me like? an example of an actor? Amir Khan. He's a, he's a superstar too. No, but the thing is with Amir Khan, when he walks into the room, he's like really quiet. When Shah Rukh Khan walks like... <laughs> so... And my daughter wants to say something. Why did you act the movie out? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to act an entire movie out, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I charge a lot of money for uh, that. She said, which, she said, which is your favorite film? Oh, which is my favorite film of my own? Of your own. Um, no. No, 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 no. No, no, go on. No. 
They're all very special for various reasons. Which would it you is remember? definitely not a Gunde. <laughs> Although that song is pretty hot, huh? Tune Mari and Priya. I love that song, huh? There's one thing I like what you do when we see you all the time. I, I, I think Band Baja Bharat. <laughs> You know, AK is in Manchester. He's in Manchester, not too far away, all right. Okay, guys, we're gonna have to wrap up because we have... So, to answer your question, uh, yes, my... F the most, the film that is most dear to me is Band Vaja Bharat. This is the most special. <laughs> my... Just, it's too, it's too special. It's the first film is just... The memories attached to that is just incomparable. So, my most dear film. Band Baja Bharat. Yeah, sure. I'm coming there. Okay.